Hello and welcome to the Healing Streams Reflections. The title for today's post is Strongholds and the Environment. Strongholds normally also has to do with spiritual mapping. What exactly is spiritual mapping? It is the research of a city to discover any inroads Satan has made which prevent the spread of the gospel evangelization of a city for Christ. The more reason why the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down such strongholds within our environment. And for us within our environment, how do we see your city, New York, or maybe any city that you might find yourself. In this instance, New York will be our case study and also Virginia. New York was named after Duke of York, later James II. They attained statehood July 26, 1788, which is the 11th state of the United States of America. The motto for New York State is higher. And the familiar name is the Empire State. What about its destiny? The destiny of New York State is his kingdom come. So why would he change his kingdom state to empire state? It's a question worthy of consideration. In many ways, New York State was the principal battleground of the Revolutionary War. Approximately one third of the skirmishes and engagements of the war were fought in New York soil. According to history, the Battle of Saratoga, the most decisive battle of the Revolutionary War, was the turning point of the revolution leading to the French alliance and thus to eventual victory. New York City, long occupied by British troops, was evacuated on November 25, 1783. There on December 4th, at Tavern, General George Washington bade farewell to his officers. Today, New York City is home to the U.S. Army Academy at West Point. During the 19th century, America became a haven for many of the oppressed people of Europe, and New York City became the melting pot. As one of the wealthiest states, New York City or New York State made tremendous strides in industry and commerce. The New York Stock Exchange, founded in 1792, has become the center of world finance. Diversified and rich natural resources, together with unmatched facilities for transport, produce a phenomenal growth in manufacturing and other industries. Now, research and inventive genius have been extensive, especially in the field of electronics, power, and the peaceful and productive use of atomic energy. 
New York City also became a leading national center for art, music, and literature, as exemplified by the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Metropolitan Opera Company, and large publishing houses. The state has supplied more than its share of national leaders, beginning with Alexander Hamilton, the first Secretary of the Treasury, and John Jay, the first Chief Justice, Aaron Burr, and George Clinton serve as Vice President, Martin Van Baron, Baron Chester A. Arthur, and Grover Cleveland went from New York politics to the presidency. In the 1900s, Theodore Roosevelt and Franco D. Roosevelt achieved the presidency, and Nelson Rockefeller served as Vice President. Governors Charles Hughes, Alfred E. Smith, Thomas E. Dewey, all were candidates for the presidency. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, as we keep mentioning all this stuff about New York City, there is a battle cry. There is a battle cry. for new reformation. And what is that battle cry? New York City is the center of world nations. We have the United States, uh, United, we have the United Nations in New York. We have the stock exchange in New York. Statues of Liberty All these centers are places that feed the world economy. And so there's the need for you and I to embark upon spiritual warfare to ensure the safety and the blessing of this dear state of ours. Then Virginia, named after Elizabeth the first Virgin Queen of England. The Chief Statehood in June 25, 1788, the 10th state. The familiar name, the Old Dominion. And what is their destiny? The Covenant Root State. The Covenant Root State. I believe that God is about to release. A great stride in this nation. And so we need to pray. We need to pray against the spirits of crime, murder, and death over the cities. Therefore, I stand together with you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that any spirit demanding the blood of the citizens of New York State and Virginia, we take authority and we abort all their hidden agendas in the name of Jesus. Join me also for praying, to pray for transformation in all brethren in Virginia cities. And let's pray that the church will rise to its place in affecting the community. Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you revive your church in these two states and that they will rise up as a militant body of yours and, Lord, begin to affect revival and change in the city. That crime wave and all kinds of demonic activities Strongholds that have been meted against the state. Lord, um, you yourself will release your presence to cause a revival and overthrow the demonic forces be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is also time to pull down forces of witchcraft over the region. 
and also pull down spirit of division within the house of God that is currently going on. Spirit of the living God, raise up your warrior angels, O oh God. Send them, Lord, to do your bidding in these states and that your church will experience peace in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, when Spanish explorers entered the Virginia region in 1570, several Indian tribes inhabited the area. Missionaries built a um, settlement along uh, the York River, but were killed only a few months later. English explorers also arrived in the late 1580s, but the expedition failed due to lack of supplies. Many pastors have been called to churches in towns or cities, spend years in violent urban centers with little harvest and finally give up and leave burnout and discouraged. Some have tried to do spiritual warfare, but they felt they were mostly shadow boxing against unseen forces that attacked their church and families with vengeance. Beloved, it does not have to be this way. God is a master strategist. There are principalities in all these places that they seem to make a headway. But at the same time, there are principles in the word of God to help us wage war against the strongholds of Satan, tear down his fortresses, and release the captives. Remember Jesus Christ, uh, at the beginning of his ministry, he releases his spiritual manifesto. And one of the headlines of the spiritual manifesto is that he came to set the captives free. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, we lift the banner of Jesus Christ over the destiny of New York State and Virginia. And we decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that every stronghold be pulled down in the name of Jesus. And Lord, release your injury coast to encamp around all these states in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now the principles in the word of God is the battle cry. The battle cry for this new reformation is for we do not wrestle flesh and blood against flesh and blood. No, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6 verse 2. And for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God uh, for pulling down strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10 4. Now the question the answer is, if the Bible says the earth is the laws and everything in it and all who live in it which Psalm 24 verse 1 adhered to. It says the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Then of course, it's true. God owns the earth. It is also true, however, that Satan has come along and made false claims. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the Bible says that Satan has declared himself the God of this world. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded? Who do not believe? Lays the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine on them. Second Corinthians 4, 4. So Satan has effectively taken captive over the whole kingdom. Realistically, most Christians will look at their city and say, I know the earth is the Lord, but what has happened to my city? Unfortunately, most do not know how to change the situation. Today, look at what is happening in America. Isn't it pathetic to see that the nation is so divided that even us at now in the church, the church today is made up of Democrats, it's made up of Republicans and also independent. But that should it be. God wants the church to come together and begin to war against the forces of darkness. Therefore, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that the mighty power of God be released uh, among all the states uh, that the Lord himself uh, will bind the hearts 
of men and women together so that there will be unison in the realms of the spirit that the church that the enemy has succeeded in bringing in front lines breaking its front lines causing it with distractions and disunity i pray oh god in the name of jesus as jesus prayed the high priestly prayer in john chapter 17 i pray oh god in the name of jesus that your prayers shall come to pass at this time lord when the this nation is so divided uh, to the standard lord there's so much institutional trend uh, all over the state uh, that lord uh, you are the one who is allowing these things to happen so that you we, the church will stand and call a fast lord we are calling the fast at this hour and we are praying in the name of jesus that you empower the church oh god lord empower the church oh god lord empower the church oh god for the church to stand lord as a church militant and war against uh, the enemy strategy in those corners of the nation lord we give you all the glory lord we give you all the praise uh, O oh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, you are the Alpha and Omega. Oh, may your name be praised. May your name be praised. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. My dear brother, my dear sister, that is the dimension that we are entering right now. Because this is the hour for the church to rise up and take its position. I, I take its position in, in the area of spiritual warfare and start warring against all these hidden enemies that they seem to trample upon the church. But let, but let me tell you, the Bible says that Jesus declared, I'll build my church and the gates of hate cannot trample upon it. All we know is that we have been empowered to go, to move forward and possess the gates of our enemies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So beloved, We'll meet again. May God richly bless you. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep warring. Keep decreeing. Keep declaring. At appointed time, we will see results by God's grace. Bye-bye.